about being patient. We're going to talk about being patient, okay? Do you think you're a patient person? Well, at my behavior, my patientness is really low because I often get sick waiting for my sister to finish showering and I often want to get things really quickly. Like, I'm really late for school and my dad told me that he is trying to go as fast as he could, mm -hmm. but it is because of the traffic jam that he said he we won't arrive on time. So that's why I don't have patience. Okay. <coughs> have you ever lost your patience? Well, I've lost my patience dozens of times. Like waiting for my bus to arrive or waiting for my sister to finish showering because I'm really really in the need to poop or I really need to get to school but my dad says that be patient but it was already homeroom and the school rule says when you go you to school, you must arrive before homeroom. And that was the time when I was late for school. Okay. Um, do you think people in Vietnam are patient? Well, as I've seen so far, I saw a lot of people with um, a lot of patience. Because patience is um, like, be able to wait for something even though it's really long, but sometimes I see people like Karens who get lost their patience when their coffee is, isn't out really quickly. And I also people and other people also lose their patience because in Vietnam, buses are always late because of traffic jams caused by motorcycles or, or cars. Mm, I see. Okay, tell me about your school. What school do you go to? When, when I moved to my house, I moved to my new school called Nam Tu Liang Secondary School. It's a high quality normal school. You see, it's, it looks like a U shape from above. It has lots of amenities. There aren't a lot of students there. There are 32 classes. There is a fully flushed canteen, a swimming pool, a gym, and also a playground for us to play. There's also an assembly place where we go every Monday. Okay, good. And you like school? I really like school on Wednesday because on Wednesday there are no hard subjects, 10 out of 10. Mostly when I go to school, I like Wednesday because I can do a lot of and play there. Because on the Wednesday, the school decides that break time is extra long. Okay, I see. Okay, what we're going to do, okay, for speaking part two, all right, I'm going to show you this, okay? Okay. So I want you to tell me about an interesting object, okay? So you need to describe for me an interesting object that your family has, all right? You should say what it is, where it came from, how long your family has kept it, and why you think it's interesting, okay? So let me give you a minute to make some notes.
stop the video, you know. It's fine. I'll just stop the video. You don't need to stay in here. And my family owns a really old flower pot. The origin of it came from my great grandfather. When he died, he left it for us. And it is worth a lot of money because all of the textures on the outside look really old. And it is about a hundred years old, which means that it has to be worth at least a couple thousand dollars. I see it is interesting because it has a lot of textures, like old people fighting for peace, or maybe like flowers who, which are decorated on the outside. Mm -hmm. It is used for mostly all amenities, but it's a flower pot, so it is mostly used for putting flowers in. And I see it's really beautiful and interesting when we put roses in this flower pot. Perfect. Okay, I will do well done then. That was lovely. Okay. Tell me this. Why do you think people like to keep things that remind them of the past? Well, people like to keep things from the past. Like the prison that the French... French army built to keep in people, Vietnamese people during the French Vietnamese war, but people didn't decide to tore it down, but they decided to renovate it into a museum so that early generations now can learn about the past because some people tell stories about the past, but they don't make sense. Some people have the theory of things that are not true. So I think things from the past are the perfect things to make a story for we, us to tell younger generations. Okay. <clears throat> tell me this as well, all right? Do you think um, museums are the best way to teach people about the past? Well, there are other ways to teach people about the past, but none is as close as the museum. As I told you, the museum is a place where there are tons of architects to tell you about the past. Didn't I mention about the French prison? Well, people literally took the machines that the French use and displayed it in the museum so that now generations now can see it. And museums also include a lot of fun activities. Some museums also have a fun center and they can also have movies to watch. Sometimes if you're hungry, people can literally buy snacks from the museum cafe. Okay, good, well done. Okay. Um, Last one, tell me how you think in the future museums can attract more people. As for now, museums attract a fair amount of people, but as I predict in the future, museums will become a lot more successful. As I read in the news program saying that a museum in the USA attracted more generations to see it because people believe that generations now don't learn enough history and when they go to museum they quickly get bored but with the newfound technology scientists in the museum of the USA literally build things that are innovative and they also interact the people also use 3d glasses to make their experience in the museum realistic. The dinosaur exhibition I just saw a few weeks ago gave me a few frights because I felt it was really real because of the realistic dinosaurs. I mean, realistic three-dimensional dinosaurs. 
I can literally hear them, but I can't feel them because they're just 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, that's the end. Well done. Then I'm going to do it beautifully. Okay. Can you press the button?